Hey, what's up? I'm Unknown Shadow. This is Eleanor Rigby. This is Colorado. And so what are we going to do today? Well, different bike than usual. Same as I, I've been spending a lot of time working on a small little Honda Monkey and neglecting my fairly large other bike. This is a 2019 Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE. Yeah, I haven't really made any videos with it. So it's the first time on camera, I guess. I haven't really done a lot of mods to the bike. I mean, I've done a few little mods to the bike, but I haven't done any major mods to the bike. Mostly that's what the monkey is for, because, I mean, that's a heck of a lot easier to work on. And I don't feel so bad if I screw it up. So what we're doing is heading over to Erica Motorsports in Denver, where I actually got the bike. And we're getting the Triumph Connectivity Pack installed. What this should do is finally enable an option that Triumph has been talking about for the last year, having Bluetooth connectivity directly on the bike and including turn by turn on the display through like Google Maps and whatnot. I've been kind of waiting for it to finally land and it landed in December, but I didn't have a chance to go and get it installed. So heading there now with the bike to hand it over and let them do their thing. I'd have likely done the install myself, but from what I can tell, it seems complicated and Triumph probably just doesn't want you to do that. So, for now, I'll let them do the work and uh, go sit somewhere nice and warm and just wait for it. Man, heated grips are nice. I'm trying to think of what mods I have done on this bike while I'm riding along. I put on fork protectors, the Triumph protective cage around the engine body, the side rack, the pannier rack, various mounts on my handlebars. So I have a mount for my phone and I have a mount for my anything else. I'm just kind of an extra grand ball mount. I did install the, the, the power kit onto this so I can actually run power to my phone. Oh, and I have put the, the lower seat on to the bike. That's a tiny bit lower. I don't know if it was worth the extra money. It's not like a huge difference. It is a little bit more solid. The original was a, a little bit cushier, but I've left it on. I like the look of the smaller seat. Um, oh, I did put the, the front uh, windshield on. I have a small smoke screen. Not exactly the most useful thing. It helps keep the bugs off the back of the instrument panel and it kind of pushes the wind just slightly higher so now it's hitting like my neck versus my chest or maybe just right at my chin. It looks nice. Some mods that I'm thinking about are of course an exhaust. I'm thinking about bringing up the, the front fender. Like there's a kit to raise it up, make it a little more dirt bike looking. I'd love to get a fender eliminator kit on this thing and get rid of that long ass tail that's on there, but I haven't really found anything yet. I'd like to get new mirrors for it at some point. We'll see what I go with. These are still the factory mirrors. This bike in particular, the XE model, comes fairly well stocked out the gate and I kind of picked it out that way so that I didn't have to throw in a whole bunch of things immediately to get the bike where I want it to be. It's funny riding such a big bike after spending so much time on the on the monkey. It's nice to actually be able to get onto the freeway and ride versus having to find as many different ways around things as possible. <laughs> One eternity later. So a lot of time has passed. The install of the actual parts didn't take long, I guess, but the overall installation process requires an ECU upgrade. And it seems that that just kind of 
it was one problem after another for them so they had to keep retrying it and retrying it and retrying it and finally it came online um, so it took about what six hours <laughs> started at 10 a.m. it's almost four o'clock now and I'm finally heading home uh, so that yeah what well, was supposed to take like an hour and a half two hours took a lot longer but now it's at least installed it's on the bike and we can start figuring out how to use it there's a new set of menus for controlling the GoPro for doing navigation all those parts it all seems to work it all pairs just nicely it uses Google Maps for its navigation which nothing informed me that I was going to be hitting this much traffic but while we're here so right there is the navigation settings on the else the TFT. So I have the tray set to timeout because before I wasn't really using it a lot. I need to go into the menus and figure out where that setting is and turn it back off so that that tray will stay on all the time so that I can actually start utilizing this stuff. Off on the right side, there's the volume mute and music play button. There's the music uh, currently what's playing where it's at. This one is for volume control. This is the current navigation. It's going to tell me when to turn next, where to go. Um, this is, again, based on Google Maps. On my phone, I've got Waze. <laughs> so, yeah, a little bit of a conflict there. Both are feeding into my Cardo headset, and uh, periodically I get the voice from either one kind of telling me when to turn, which is kind of funny. So I don't have a particular opinion on it right now. Um, we'll see how useful it is over time. Um, it is kind of nice to be able to have things kind of at your fingertips versus having to fiddle with the phone and everything else. So when everything's dialed in, I suspect I'll be getting a lot more use out of it than really right now. Overall, is it worth the money? I guess we'll have to find out. Hard to say right now. I do like having this part installed. It's something that Triumph has promised for a fair amount of time. But yeah, so we'll call that a video. I do like having it installed. I'll make more use of it and figure out how much I would recommend it to other people. Uh, for now, I'm okay with it. But... So yeah, like and subscribe and do those things if you want to do those things. Otherwise, I hope you have a good day. Thanks. Bye.